Hey everybody, thank you so much for clicking on this video. So today we are talking about the fat burning zone and why it's stupid. Specifically, we're gonna break down what it is, why you don't really need to worry about it, and what I think you should focus on instead if your goal is fat loss. Also, if this is your first time watching one of my videos, my name is Justina. I'm a certified personal trainer, nutrition coach, and functional strength coach. And honestly, I see a lot of other people doing that in their videos, so I figured I'd try it, but that feels really awkward, so I'm never gonna do that again. Okay, let's jump in. Starting off, let's talk about what the fat burning zone is. I'm sure you've seen charts like this or that on cardio equipment, or maybe a trainer or a coach has showed them to you. And at first glance, if your goal is fat loss, you've probably thought, wow, this is the zone I need to stay in to lose fat. And it's not really false, but that's also not really true. So this fat burning zone that's dictated up here, this is an approximation of intensity, usually based on your heart rate. And at this intensity level, you will burn a higher percentage of fat than carbohydrates. That is science, that is true. But unfortunately, trainers, coaches, studios, influencers, people have just kind of like blown this out of proportion and also taken that truth and just kind of stretched it. It's been turned into this like miracle cure, this golden ticket, the answer to all of your problems for fat loss. And that's not true. It was like rogue hair coming out. <laughs> Ooh, okay. So let's talk about why you don't need to worry about it. We see marketing like this a lot, right? The big one that I can think of is Orange Theory. They, I mean, this is literally what they do. It's heart rate training. And one of their big selling factors is Epoch. I'm not gonna dive into Epoch in this video and why, again, it's just like this. It's like kind of blown out of proportion. But if you want that video, just let me know down in the comments below. There's another studio in New York City and Miami that's dance cardio based that just announced that they're doing metabolism boosting dance cardio workouts. I don't know what secret sauce they think they have, but I guarantee it's just a marketing ploy. And that's the deal here. These are all marketing ploys. People are taking an unsexy piece of science and stretching the shit out of it to make it feel sexy. And again, by sexy, I mean like miracle cure, golden ticket, this is the answer to all of your problems. And it's, it's not. Now, instead of just telling you that, I'm gonna show you with some science and some math. I had to crawl under my desk. <laughs> We're gonna do that with the help of my personal trainer textbook, the NASA Essentials of Personal Fitness Training, sixth edition, bam. So I'm gonna use this as like a direct source and quote in the video, A, because I think it's very reliable, and B, they actually give a really solid example of why the fat burning zone is like nothing that you need to be concerned about. So instead of like making up my own and then most likely messing up the numbers, we're just gonna use the one here. And I actually, I also wanna show you, this portion is literally called the myth of the fat burning zone. Like. It's in my textbook. <laughs> this is where I read to you from my book. So essentially, I'm gonna show you two different examples of 20 minute workouts, one in this fat burning zone and one at a higher intensity. Keep in mind the fat burning zone isn't like crazy high intensity, it's very moderate. I would think like, like a brisk power walk. One other thing that you need to know but you actually don't need to know is that I'm gonna be referring to a phrase called RQ. RQ is the respiratory quotient, so it's basically like, Think of it this way, it's like a much more accurate way of measuring what zone you're in over heart rate. Like if you were to do this on a cardio machine, it's guessing what zone you're in based off of just your heart rate. We're gonna read it right from the textbook. The respiratory quotient, or RQ, is the amount of carbon dioxide expired divided by the amount of oxygen consumed measured during rest or at a steady state of exercise using a metabolic analyzer. So. Yeah, we don't have access to metabolic analyzers. So essentially when I say RQ, I'm talking about the more accurate version of what zone you're in. Something that none of us need to know. So let's start with workout number one. Workout number one will be 20 minutes long, and this is gonna be in our fat burning zone. So we're gonna be on the treadmill, walking at a 3.0, so a nice moderate pace for 20 minutes. Let's say that results in an RQ of 0.8. So then if we go to our little RQ chart, that's gonna show us that 67% of energy is coming from fat, and 33% of energy is coming from carbohydrates. At this 3.0 pace, this person is expending 4.8 calories per minute. So that means each minute, 3.2 calories are burned from fat and 1.6 calories are burned from carbohydrates because it's 67% and 33%. Are we, are we sticking around? Are we hearing this? Okay. So that means in the full workout, this person has expended 64 calories from fat and 32 calories from carbohydrates. So in our first workout, we are expending 
energy from fat at a higher percentage than carbohydrates. Let's jump into workout number two. So workout number two, we are still gonna go for 20 minutes on the treadmill, but we're actually gonna go at a 6.0 mile per hour pace. So this is gonna be like, like a nice jog. So at this pace, we're gonna say that the RQ is at a 0.86. At that rate, that means that 46% of energy is coming from fat and 54% of energy is coming from carbohydrates. So as we can see, less energy is going to be burned from fat. But at this 6.0 pace, this is actually going to expend 9.75 calories per minute. So if we break that down, 4.48 calories per minute from fats and 5.2 calories per minute from carbohydrates. That means for the full 20 minutes, this person has expended 90 calories from fat and 104 calories from carbohydrates. So while the percentage is going to be less at this higher intensity of calories burned from fat, you're still gonna burn more calories from fat. And if we're looking at the thing that matters the most, you're actually just burning more calories overall in this second workout. So this brings me to my final point of what you actually should be focusing on. Do we all know what I'm gonna say? Should we just say it together? Calorie deficit. If your goal is fat loss, the only thing that matters is being in a caloric deficit. That is how you lose fat. If you don't know what a caloric deficit is, that just means that you are expending more energy than you're taking in. And calories are a unit of energy. Now I do wanna step back for a second and just address the two workout examples that I gave you because I don't want you walking away going, wow, okay, Justina said I should never train in the fat burning zone. It's a waste of time. I always need to do really high intensity. No. Not what I'm saying at all. I want you to walk away from this video and actually understand that if you're trying to get into a caloric deficit, if your goal is fat loss, you should not be relying on your workouts to get into that deficit. Number one, you just don't burn as many calories as you think during your workout. And number two, I don't personally think it's super healthy for us to associate working out with burning off calories. It starts to tie this idea of like, exercise is a punishment or we need to earn our food. And the more that we can look at our movement as something to make us stronger and feel better, the more that we can step away from that mindset. What you should be focusing on instead is adjusting your nutrition. It's gonna be more accurate and it's just so much easier to actually control. But in terms of your movement, if you do have fat loss goals, I think you should be doing a little bit of everything. I think everybody should. You know, this is coming from a functional viewpoint, but if you're only working slow, if you're only working fast, if you're only working explosive, if you're only working heavy, only working light, what's gonna happen in real life when you meet something that's different than you're used to training? You're gonna get injured. So personally, I feel that there is a place for everything in our training. So that's why I view training as a great way to help you reduce the risk of injury and just live longer. That's why I always say that I lead workouts that make you stronger and smarter. I want you to understand why you're doing something and how it's gonna benefit you down the road. So just keep in mind, if something seems like a quick fix or like the miracle cure, it's probably bullshit. Whew, we made it. Okay, hopefully that explains a little bit more just about like the marketing, especially behind this fat burning zone. But always remember with everything that I say, at the end of the day, if you have a type of workout that keeps you consistent, you enjoy, and gets you closer to your goals, that's the thing you should be doing. Any questions, leave them down in that comment box below. Hit that subscribe button, and I will see you all in the next one.